nanohub.org. So here's this my nanohub space where I had pre-computed some things and it manages your sessions. Typically you guys have three allowed sessions. I have a few more. You can manage your tools, your favorites, that the ones you ran recently, the favorites, all tools. Um, if you contribute, you have messages, then you have maybe questions you posted and there might be answers to it that you posted. If you submitted tickets to the tools, there's a system which keeps track of your tickets and you can look at the status of your tickets when something doesn't work. And then if you're part of some groups, you're, you manage groups. Um, there's a poll, like who are you? Well, I'm a professor, I can vote on that. Um, and see some stats. So you have 48% of graduate students, undergrad, professionals few of us professors. So here I wanted to start a simulation that I'm going to show you results in the second floor. Here is, okay, here's the heart rate calculation I wanted to show you first. So here's the simulation of a symmetric resonant tunneling diode uh, where we assumed a Hartree charge self-consistent solution over a bias range of 0 to 1 volt. We have set the no uh, doping spacers or low doping spacers to 50 nanometers away from the central RTD and the central RTD is 555 nanometers. And here's the resulting uh, potential profile. Again, you see emitter-bound states forming. You see the resonance coupling. And you see most of the potential clearly drops over the, um, the collector and a little bit of potential drops over the emitter. We can zoom in here to look at the potential a little bit more carefully. And you see at resonance here, there's a little bit of band bending here it's not quite linear uh, as compared to when we have no coupling, then it looks really linear. And let's make this a little bit more concrete by looking at the charge density. So here's the charge density at zero bias. As we crank up the bias, charge grows in the emitter, but it also grows in the central RTD until it drops. It drops at about 0.48 volts. Let's look back at the current density, uh, the current, and hover over here. That's at 0.48 volts. So right after the peak, charge drops. We can look at the resonances versus voltage, and we see indeed here's the central resonance coming down. It's interacting here with the emitter state two then with the emitter state 1. It's resisting the pull down, the linear pull down, since the potential in the emitter and the central resonance floats up. And then roughly at 0.48 you see a step where the resonance plops down. Okay? You see something similar here in the second state. From 0.48 it drops down in potential like that because the central charge vanishes at this particular bias. So that overall explains the current versus voltage characteristic that increases the current flow compared to Thomas Fermi a little bit and linearizes the IV characteristic. Okay. All right.
and which one is this? Negative. So here I've done the asymmetric case. So here's the uh, a resonant tunneling diode simulation where we've made the collector barrier to be 7 nanometers thick. Uh, we do a heart recharge self-consistent calculation and we set the spacer only to 10 nanometers. So not at 50 nanometers of what we've done similar, simulated before, but just 10 nanometers. And we'll see what effects that has. So here's the uh, bandage profile as a function of voltage. We can look at the electron density as a function of voltage. So you see the electron density rise in the central device. It rises very strongly and at some bias at 0.36 volts it drops like a rocket. Okay. Um, in the previous lectures, we had seen a much larger charge accumulation here. It's not so large because the conduction band edge doesn't have a long depletion region of non-doping. It's just a 10 nanometer region. So now at 0.38, we said charge drops, right? So here it's very smooth steps in potential. And now you see in the central device, it really changes how the lever arm works, right? Here, below this voltage of 0.36, most of the potential drops in the collector. And then it suddenly drops dramatically. And then it drops smoothly again. So let's look at that at the resonances again. Here's the resonances versus emitter. And again, you see here is the central resonance going down linearly, and then it drops. Okay. And sorry, this is the central resonance here. And then it drops. And the emitter bound state is not even uh, really found well here. It's too broad, so it's not even identified at the resonator at the simulator. But then the potential drops and then it goes linearly again. And at the end, we have a current voltage characteristic that looks like this, where we really have to zoom in here to look at this peak. And it's a very weak peak. And I sort of messed up because I wanted to have it only at 50 nanometers, but I configured it wrong. So what we could do is ch change this to 50. And 50. And come back in 10 minutes or so when it's done. Okay.